Yeah, I'm doing a video. About these products here. Alright. <laughs> so welcome to New Aquatics. This is Matthew. So today is all about KH and PH. So in the aquarium hobby, one, one thing some people are going to tell you is to do not chase pH. Correct. Don't chase it because if you're constantly moving it all over the place, your fish are going to get weak in the immune system and have a hard time taking care of themselves. But it all depends on the water that you have coming out of your sink, whether or not you use reverse osmosis water or water that is from your local fish store because some of them do sell water for fish tanks and uh, some of them are treated already so some of the water from your local fish store if you don't realize it are probably treated with chemicals uh, to make sure that they are balanced at 7.0 pH um, they have the right amount of KH right amount of uh, general hardness that type of thing but today we're talking about uh, you know balancing and adjusting your pH and KH some of the things out there that you'll learn is that um, Coral, so crushed coral, that's what you're going to hear all the time. You're going to hear, get the crushed coral, crushed coral this, crushed coral that, and then you go out to the store, and all you can find on the internet at your local fish store is Argonite. Argonite sand, and you can't find anything that's big enough. That's, that's a common problem. You can get crushed coral off of Aquarium Co-op, but then you have to pay for shipping, and it's, you know, only, I believe, one pound of it, right? Uh, it's only one pound, and that one pound is $5. And that's for every 10 gallons. So I have a 60 gallon aquarium. So in order for my, uh, you know, my aquarium to actually start adjusting itself with pH is if I put in a roughly, what, six pounds of coral. And then you got to change that out over time, constantly over and over, constantly changing it out. That seems like a hassle having to change out your substrate. So people say, just take that coral and put it in your hang on the back filter. Well, I did all those and uh, I put coral in the substrate, lots of it. I put coral in the hang on the back filter several months later, almost a year, still nothing is keeping my pH stable because of the water that comes out of my tap. Every time I take water from my sink, it lowers my pH because my pH out of my sink, weird enough, is 6.7 most of the time. I've seen it even after 24 hours at 6.5. So. Um, so I need to do something. So today we're going to, you know, do a review on three products here. Sea Kim's Alkaline Buffer here. And I know there's a glare. So Sea Kim's, where's that glare coming from? Hold on a sec. Ah, there we go. On Sea Kim's Alkaline Buffer. Florin Delta KH Plus by Brightwell Aquatics. And Fritz, the closest thing that they make, so Fritz Aquatics, the closest thing that they make is this Rift Lake Cichlid Buffer. Now, I know that sounds a little different and that it's a cichlid buffer, but after review, I found out that this and this are almost 100% the same. I mean, it's hard to determine the amount of different carbonate salts in each one, but the carbonate salt mixtures is, is really close. So... In every one of these, you're going to do a certain amount of, you know, of the chemical in every water change. And the reason why I mention water changes is because if your pH is low, you want to slowly increase it over time. So on the, on the instructions, in order to get it up, you know, to where you want it at before you do in the water change, you follow the instructions exactly like it says. Uh, this one here, it... Uh, it says it'll raise your pH up to 7.8 to 8.4 for Malawi if you put in a, a half a teaspoon. If you put in a half a teaspoon, but you're not buying this because you have, you know, African cichlids. This right here is just a mixture of carbonate salts. So if you take that dose and cut it in half and you use that and you can raise your pH almost essentially the same as this. So. These are roughly the same. You get this much for about 15 bucks. This right here was, I believe, $8. Um, but yeah, so I've used this, this, and of course this to try to raise my pH and see which one is, and you can't see that one, as, to see which one is, is better. So, and I got, I got the answer for you. 
Now this one here specifically, it says that you need to use the amount indicated below to raise it. Remember, like I said, half that dose if you're just doing it to raise you know, your pH up to around seven. And you'll do that uh, in your tank uh, daily, so every 24 hours until you reach the desired pH that you want in your aquarium. So with this one here, it took three days to go from a 6 point, uh, 6.2 all the way up to a 7.4, which is where I want to keep it somewhere around 7.4, 7.6 for most of my aquariums, just because I have certain, that's the level playing field for what I have, um, except for the uh, Epistogramma tank, which I keep exactly at 7.0, which is a little bit more work. But yeah, so on this one here, you do that. So you raise it up, and then uh, you'll do that daily until your pH is raised and maintained. Now, if you have a tank like mine where your pH, you have tons of plants, tons of floating plants, it's filled with pothos in the back, then your pH is going to drop faster because, you know, it, ju it just is. Uh, plants lower your pH. And then, of course, I also add in botanicals like... Um, uh, like almond leaves and almond bark and alder cones because of the type of fish they have in there so the pH lowers. Now I'm mainly using this to raise my KH. My pH goes with it so I need to monitor the pH and you do that with API with the API pH test kit, the liquid one. But yeah, so on this one here I've noticed that if you use this and you go the half dose, you get the pH where you're at, you can literally use this once a week and do a half uh, a half dose so it is a quarter of a teaspoon for every 10 gallons of water or an eighth of a teaspoon for every five gallons of water. So if you use five gallon buckets, um, then you'll wanna use the, uh, the eighth of a teaspoon uh, on this one. So that would be the dose uh, for this particular one. And you'll do that weekly. Weekly on your water changes until you've uh, seen that the amount you're putting in there is starting to raise the pH again. And then once you get to that point, then you'll go or only adding in uh, this stuff to your water change water every two to three weeks. So you'll have to, you know, test the pH at least every two to three weeks. I test it every week just because I'm just that type of person. But this stuff works really good. So Fritz, even though this is made for uh, African cichlids for the most part, this uses the, the use of this at a, a lesser dose, a half dose on there for uh, the Malawi and Victoria, a half dose actually does really well for people trying to get their pH up to around 7, 7.2, as long as you don't, you know, go, go in too much. So this works really well. So if you do want to buy something right here like this, this Fritz Aquatic Rift Lake Cichlid, Cichlid Salt does really well at keeping your pH at a stable level if you're trying to keep it around 7. And that's what this is all about. It's about keeping your pH around 7. And it also keeps your KH. Now that's the main reason I got it, because it, it's a mixture of cichlid, uh, of, sorry, not cichlid salt. It's a mixture of carbonate salts. So it's not just one carbonate salt, which would be baking soda. It's not that. Uh, it's a mixture. So, so stuff like magnesium uh, bicarbonate, calcium bicarbonate, sodium bicarbonate, and I can't remember the other one. It's uh, uh, potassium bicarbonate, maybe. But it's a mixture of those salts. And because of that, um, that mixture, it helps stabilize the pH and the KH much better than some. So this one right here, if I had to give it a star rating out of five, I'd say I'd give it about a four and a half, uh, you know, stars because of the fact that it actually works. Alkaline buffer. Now this one right here is my buffer of choice um, at the moment. And that's because it's a little bit cheaper than this uh, for me. So I actually was able to get 1.2 kilos, which is quite a bit. This is uh, 300 grams, so I'm, I'm getting basically 12, uh, 1,200 grams for $20. This right here is, uh, you know, is 600 grams, I believe, 680 grams for $15. So I'm getting quite a bit of, uh, of a deal on the one I just purchased. But the reason why is because just like uh, Fritz Rift Lake Cichlid Buffer here, this one here is also a mixture is a mixture of carbonate salts. So it's not just one, it's carbonate salts like calcium carbonate, magnesium carbonate, and sodium bicarbonate. And this one actually has less sodium in it um, because it is made for planted aquariums. And it also has less, it doesn't have a phosphate, but uh, you know, it doesn't have phosphate in there. So a phosphate uh, at all. So it doesn't have that, it has the potassium bicarbonate. Um, from, what I can, from what I can see, now this one is the same. You're gonna put it in every 24 hours is at about 
one quarter of a teaspoon for every five gallons of water for the, the alkaline buffer. And it's very similar to the uh, Rift Lake Cichlid buffer. Uh, there it's an eighth of a teaspoon for every five gallons, but it's, it's really close. Um, the only difference is that this one here specifically is made for plants and it says it doesn't have any phosphates. So if you're looking for that guarantee, then that's why I choose this one. This right here is amazing. Works great, does great, um, and it, uh, it does exactly. Now, if you're trying to hit a specific pH, all right, something very specific, Seachem, uh, unlike, unlike uh, you know, Fritz Aquatics, Seachem actually has an online calculator you can use to tell you how much you need to add to raise your pH to a certain level. And it also even tells you on the back here, all right, and I don't know if you can see that, on the back here, that if you add a certain amount of this buffer with the acid buffer, all right, in a, uh, you know, in a certain ratio every time, and you do that until you reach the desired pH, you'll actually get a pH that you specifically want, a targeted pH. Now, I'm not targeting a specific pH. I'm trying to get somewhere between 7, 7 and 7.6 roughly, and then I will adjust from there using things like uh, catapa leaves and alder cones, that type of thing, to get the pH down, but keep the KH high. So again, another product, amazing product. See, Kim, you also make an amazing product. Uh, the, uh, you know, the alkaline buffer. Again, this is something you have to use with your water changes. Uh, the difference with this one here is that I, uh, uh, I did the same thing. Now, I had to go a little bit longer. So I had to go about four weeks. Was it four weeks? For what? Before I started doing half, half doses. I don't know. But at one point, uh, you'll notice that your pH is staying, uh, you know, where you want it. When you notice that, add a half dose on the next water change. Check it, you know, you know, a week later, see where your pH is. And if it's still high or low, don't add it. So it's the same thing. Eventually, you'll get to the point where you only need to add this about once every two to three weeks. Again, amazing product, just like Fritz here. Okay? A four and a half star. Okay? So if you choose... Uh, one of these either one's fine. Just go with the one. That's the cheapest. All right now a product That we bought with high hopes All right, mainly mainly because I do have a product over there and I'll, I'll grab it in just a minute or my wife can grab it the calcium yeah. Okay, yep, so this right here this specifically says for Florin Delta KH increases carbonate hard hardness for all freshwater planted aquarium this is crap okay I'm gonna tell you that right now this does not work and what you're buying is baking soda so whenever I bought this it didn't have the ingredients at all on the website where I bought it from but when I get it I looked at the ingredients and the ingredients the only thing in this is sodium bicarbonate and it says it is USP grade which is uh, so USP so yeah so this is USP grade uh, sodium bicarbonate now USP is just the uh, it's a reference to the United States uh, pharmacopoeia maybe I believe is what it is I don't know but this right here is baking soda now why do I say it doesn't work it doesn't work because this one right here specifically and I'm gonna turn it around so people can see because this is like by a company I had high hopes for Brightwell Aquatics it says to add in a quarter teaspoon into a 16 fluid ounce thing of purified water. All right. And it says to mix really well. And then it says take only one fluid ounce of that purified water and put that in five gallons of tank water. So you have to pull out one ounce for every five gallons of water. Now, now if anybody... Anybody knows the complication in that? Let's just say, you know, how many, so 16 ounces is what? It's two cups, right? Or is it 16 ounces in a cup? No, it's eight ounces in a cup. Eight ounces in a cup. Right. So 16 ounces is two cups of water. So if you take two cups of purified water, you put it in a, a, a bowl or a cup or something, and you mix it up, you have your solution. Now you take this solution and you add it at one ounce at a time for every, t uh, you know, five gallons. So for my 60 gallons of water that I have back there, I'm going to put in uh, 12 ounces, which leaves me with four ounces of water. So now what do I do with that four ounces of water? Now, so I had to, you know, had to think about something else to do. So if you break that down in a half, so 
in the, in the half there, and you do uh, eight ounces and do an eighth of a teaspoon, then that'll be what you can put in for every. So yeah, so taking an eighth of a teaspoon for, you know, doesn't matter how much water, an eighth of a teaspoon would be for 40 gallons of water. And then a, uh, you know, sixteenth of a teaspoon, if anybody has a teaspoon, a sixteenth of a teaspoon, would be for 20 gallons of water. <laughs> so if you have a 10 gallon tank and you got this, then you're going to need one thirty seconds of a teaspoon for that 10 gallon tank. Or you have to find a way to make 16 ounces of this solution and pull out uh, two ounces of it at a time to put into your tank. Now the problem with this one here is that it literally says on the back how, how often you should, you should add this. So let me read here. It says every two hours, every two hours, all right, 24 hours, 24 hours. Dose only once every 24, 24 hours for these while you're raising your pH, okay? Only once every 24 hours. This, every two hours. That should be your first sign right there. If you're dosing it every two hours, that's how fast it's going to also decline, okay? So, dose it every two hours until you reach the desired pH. So, I tested it out. I dosed it every two hours, got my desired pH. It took only eight hours to get it all the way up there. Now, remember, that's a rapid a rapid increase, and some fish may not be able to handle that. So I tested the water again two days later and it already declined. So it went from 7.2 down to 6.4. And I was like, okay, so I added in some more. And I did it again, I raised it back up, took another six hours to raise it back up, all right? And I was like, I was like, what is this stuff? So I looked on the back and there it was right there. It says baking soda. I was like, I could have just grabbed the baking soda right out of my cabinet over there and done the same thing. So Brightwell Aquatics, this product that you have right here, it's Delta Florin KH. Why are you putting just baking soda and selling it as a aquarium product? You sh should be ashamed of yourselves. You can buy baking soda at the grocery store. So if anybody sees this, stay away from it. Just buy baking soda, uh, organic baking soda at the grocery store. You'll be better off. Um, now, why did I have high hopes? Because this right here is by Brightwell Aquatics as well. This right here is an anhydrous calcium that is made for marine aquariums. And this product right here, this product actually works. So we use this to raise our uh, calcium in our tanks up to uh, 120 parts per million. And it stays pretty stable there every week. We only have to add it to every water change. So this product works. So this is, again, the ingredients are written right on there. It's calcium chloride and it's a powdered version of it. It dissolves really quickly in the water and it stays in the water really well for about a week. So this, this stuff works, right? But this, this, ain't, this ain't a review about this product. It's a review about their, their crappy baking soda that they're selling to people as a fish product. Baking soda. So on this, if I had to give it a star rating, and if I could, I probably wouldn't give it any stars at all. But since I have to give it a star rating, I'm going to give it one star. Mm. Crappy product. Probably avoid this product from Brightwell Aquatics. Now, again, I'm pretty sure it's hit or miss with them because this product right here, it works amazing. This product, might as well throw it away. But I'm not going to. I'm going to keep it as an emergency backup if I run out of these other ones, which I hopefully I never will. But so far, the reason why I mentioned that hit or miss with uh, Brightwell Aquatics is because I've never been failed by Seachem products. They've always come through. Every single product that I've bought from Seachem, uh, you know, Seachem, has worked perfectly. I haven't had any issues with it. They've all done exactly what the instructions said they've done and worked exactly like the instructions said they will. Fritz Aquatics, same thing. The only problem I had with Fritz Aquatics was Amazon. If you buy Fritz Aquatics bacteria or anything that has an expiration date off Amazon, as soon as you get it, check the expiration date because I don't know how many times I've bought Fritz products off of Amazon and they're expiring in exactly one month. Same thing with this. If you buy this off of Amazon, not this product, but any Seachem products with an expiration date off Amazon, check the expiration date. If it expires within you know a few months and it, you're not getting almost the exact amount, so like the bacteria lasts for four years, and if you buy one and you have one year left before you need to use it, probably should not be using it. You should probably send it back and say this is about to expire. Even though it's a year, it's still about to expire when you're accounting for four years of shelf life. Don't use it. Make sure you get a newer product because bacteria is very important. 
But yeah, Seachem Prime, Fritz Aquatics. If you're trying to keep your pH and KH stable with a product that works, then I recommend one of these two. And now I'm not endorsed by any of these people. These are my own products that I bought and tested. I've tested them because I want to make sure that my fish are in a pH stabilized in an aquarium that works for them. Not for me. I don't, I don't chase it. I just check it every week. And then I make the adjustments once a week if needed. Sometimes I don't make them with these two products. I rarely make adjustments. I just add it to the water chains, like I said, a quarter teaspoon, eat both of them, a quarter teaspoon for every five gallons of water. Or this one, sorry, let me, let me scratch that. This is a quarter teaspoon for every five gallons of water. This right here is a quarter teaspoon for every 10 gallons of water. All right, sorry, I said that wrong earlier, but yeah. Quarter teaspoon for every 10 gallons, quarter teaspoon for every five gallons. That's one of the big differences. You may get more uses out of this, but cost efficiency is the reason why I'm going with this product right now. So if this ends up being cheaper than this product, I'll buy this one. If it ends up being cheaper than this product, I'll buy this one and so forth and so on. So just remember, quarter of a teaspoon for every 10 gallons for the Fritz Rift, uh, Rift Lake Cichlid Salt, and that's for just raising your pH to around seven, not the you know, 7.8 or the uh, 9.0 for the other, you know, African cichlids. If you're using this in regular fresh water, and this one right here is a quarter teaspoon for every five gallons. So that's my review of these three products by Brightwell Aquatics, Seachem, and Fritz Aquatics. So like, again, it's pretty easy. If you can't find things like crushed coral in your neighborhood, if you can't find uh, any limestone that's safe for your aquarium, if you can't fi find any dolomite for your aquarium as well, then, and you need to rely on things like this because your pH in your tap is already too low and it's acidic when it comes out or even too high, um, then, you know, you would need products like these. You would need the, uh, alkal uh, the acid one of this version here. Fritz has a pH down. It doesn't do anything for the KH, but if your KH is already high, then pH down works pretty good. But yeah, I would stick with uh, Seachem and Fritz Aquatics if you're trying to buy pH products or KH products to help adjust those and keep them stable. Well, thanks for coming to Noob Aquatics, and we hope you enjoyed this review. You have a wonderful day.